Joining us now is the former commander of the U.S. Army Forces in Europe and the Pershing Chair at the Center for European Policy Analysis, retired Lieutenant General Ben uh, Hodges, who was in Ukraine over the weekend, spoke with President Zelensky. General Hodges, appreciate you being with us. I'm wondering what you saw and what you heard in Kyiv and, and uh, how you assess the situation on the ground there. Ashton, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I was impressed with President Zelensky. Uh, that guy is a fighter. Uh, he is not confused about the threat. He understands uh, very clearly what the threat from the Kremlin is, but he also is uh, working hard to try and keep his uh, population, uh, let's say, calm and, and confident about their preparations. And of course, this is having a significant impact on, on their economy as well. In your meeting with Zelensky, I mean, was it clear to you where his head is at tonight with the threat from Russia? I mean, there's, you know, there's been this debate about the word imminent, essentially, that the White House has been using. Uh, we've heard from a number of Ukrainian officials, uh, you know, who've spoken off the record, uh, pushing back on the idea of, of imminent. Well, I think uh, it's probably a good thing that the White House is backing away a little bit from the word imminent, because that implies, obviously, as you know, that it's absolutely going to happen. I think that uh, in the uh, Zelensky government, they believe that this pressure is going to continue uh, in hopes that the, the government cracks somehow and it finally gives in to some sort of uh, concession to the Kremlin. And of course, that the, the same thing would happen with all of us, that there would be a crack somewhere. Um, and it, if you understand that, then you can actually withstand it for a longer period of time. They, they know that the uh, Russian forces, what they're doing now, they really can do this indefinitely. What what are the capabilities of the Ukrainian forces? I know, I've you know read that they've they've improved a lot uh, over the last uh, several years, and obviously the U.S. and, and others have been uh, sending over javelins and and uh, other uh, more high tech uh, weaponry. What would a what would a fight look like? Well, I I was listening to Clarissa's report earlier, and, and of course she's right there in those trenches, and she has a feel for what it looks like in that particular segment. Um, but Ukrainian armed forces have, have improved significantly since 2014. The United States, Canada, UK, we've been working with them. And frequently, my soldiers would say, sir, we, we're learning so much from Ukrainians about what it's like to fight against Russians. And yeah. uh, Ukrainians are very, very tech savvy. They are adaptable. The equipment that we provided, they immediately put it to use. So this is a this is a good ground force. Uh, where the Russians, of course, have the overmatch is going to be in terms of uh, naval capabilities there in the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov, uh, air forces. So um, th there is a mismatch in certain aspects, but on the ground, I think that uh, we're not going to see uh, this big giant red arrow going across Ukraine towards Kiev um, because. The Russians don't have the capability, at least not yet, to actually be able to do this. There will be a lot of casualties. And uh, there's also been a lot of talk about the, the Ukrainian population and their willingness, perhaps, for a more protracted conflict uh, of a different variety. Do you think that's realistic? I mean, again, th this is all dependent on a Russian invasion. Sure. Um, so if there is a new Russian offensive uh, and they do attempt to drive deep into uh, Ukraine, I tell you, I would hate to be a Russian truck driver uh, in a convoy because there will be thousands of Ukrainians that are armed. Uh, there's there's a sense of, uh, of determination and defiance that I've encountered when I've spoken with Ukrainians. Uh, this is not going to be pretty. And I don't want to romanticize the idea of 30,000 people with AK-47s in the woods. This will be this will be ugly, and of course the Russians will retaliate in a way where a lot of uh, innocent people will be killed. Well, let's, let's be clear about who we're dealing with here. Yeah. Uh, and these territorial defense forces, we're, we're a long way from them being ready to fight. Uh, there's some organizational things and, and training, of course. But uh, I think what struck me was the, uh, the determination and the, and the spirit. The Ukrainians yeah. are going to fight. Lieutenant General Hodges, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Anderson. Coming up, the man many consider to be the NFL's best player ever, Tom Brady.